Well, I welcome you back, and indeed, we're still with the big story for today. And uh, that big news that came out yesterday evening, and uh, well, saying that the Nigerian Labour Congress has suspended the purported strike action they were to embark tomorrow, uh, the 7th of June, Wednesday. Well, that's taking center stage on the show today, and as we look at also uh, what transpired also yesterday, uh, when a court order from the uh, National Industrial Court came um, telling uh, the N Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress not to embark on any strike and uh, to refrain from doing so. And uh, well, a need for us to really look at both uh, angles. But anyway, we still have no other person but Barrister Kisi Omoyerabo helping us to look at not just uh, the legal point of view and what would have happened or what happened yesterday, but also for us to also critically look at also an agreement that was reached yesterday on account of the issue of the strike and hence uh, the uh, Nigerian Labour Congress uh, calling off that very strike. Well, yeah, uh, we looked greatly at uh, the court's order restraining the Nigerian Labour Congress uh, for embarking on the strike yesterday, but that was not only what happened yesterday. Like I initially said, there was also a meeting uh, going on between the federal government and uh, the Labour uh, Union on account of um, the, foil, uh, the subsidy removal. And uh, th th that agreement, or rather that meeting, ended up with a whole lot of agreements uh, on both sides that made Labour also have a different face towards the issue of the strike. And uh, l l let's look at some of the demands that uh, made both the federal government and Labour have a breakthrough, which also resulted, like I said, to suspension of the strike action. Now, on top of the list is the review of wages and award and establishment of a framework and timeline for the implementation of wage or salary increase. And also on that, uh, uh, a review of the World Bank finance cash transfer scheme and proposed inclusion of lower income earners into the program. Now, but let, let's, let's, let's also remember that earlier on Sunday, the Trade Union Congress had a meeting with the federal government where they requested for about 200,000 Naira minimum wage, which we are also, the discussion also continued yesterday. And everybody always knew that it would have to come to an increase in salary to get the Trade Union Congress and NLC having a change of heart. But my question is, even after many years, some states have refused to pay the existing minimum wage of 30,000 naira. Michael, let me ask As you of last count, I, want, I would really want you to answer these two questions. As of last count, almost 21 states were not implementing it at all. That's the problem. That's my first question. And my second question is, will this not be seen that the Nigerian Labour Congress is only fighting for themselves and not the general public, knowing that the increase will only affect workers in the federal government establishment? Thank you. Michael, what was the necessity of going for that meeting? Because there was a hike in fair price. That's and right. they got there, they didn't discuss it. Look at what you just told us they discussed. Minimum wage for World Bank. Was that what we sent you there to go and discuss? I, I see, I'm a very blunt human being. If you had said that we're angry, we go and strike, if you do not reduce fair price, you went to a meeting with the government and you didn't discuss how they would reduce the fair price anymore. You went to the field of human infrastructure, how they will increase your wage, how many Nigerians are working. And work is still, how many, do, how many Nigerians are even in the civil service? We are, the, we, are the, we are they representing the poor workers in Quest FM? No. We are they representing the poor guys in the Budu market? No. We are they representing the road worker in my village? No. So if they know that the fair price was the purpose of that going to that meeting, what would they didn't mention it at all? They are talking of increasing inflation, 200,000 minimum wage. Do they know the meaning of that? If you give me 200,000 minimum wage, now my bag of rice now 170. Or if you have given me 10,000 minimum wage and I can buy my bag of rice 1,000, which one is better? Well, we look, we everything is escalating. And the Nigerian Labour Congress did not go there to represent us. They went there for their own interest. Like I said just now, if I'm in a meeting with you, we are calling one to settle. Uh, before I could get on that meeting, we will slam with the court order. The, the meeting ends abruptly. And we're going to the trenches. If you're in the Nigerian Labour Congress, the military Labour Congress that we know. The entire time of Oshimole, the time of Oshimono, we are in the meeting, you, you went behind, you get the court order, and we are still talking, and we are still signing agreement. No, it was all an RNG system. The Nigerian Labour Congress went on their own, and they are betrayers. And they always pay for themselves, and whatever they, they must have collected, collected for themselves. 
So that means they did not go for Nigeria. They did not go to the military to blame Nigeria. Oh, oh, Whatever okay. was that agreement, it was agreement between two, two, two contract, co 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 conspirators and the betrayal of Nigeria. Oh, 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 okay, now be before you show your anger on account of the, uh, the ending of that meeting, um, let, let's leave what they also requested for themselves. They also did request for, ni for, for the common Nigerians a lot. And let, let, Do you let, know how much they were paid for that city? Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I don't know. But let, let's, let's now come to that that concerns and benefit the larger population. And is themselves and the federal government to review the establishment of a framework for the completion and rehabilitation of uh, the nation's refinery and also the maintenance of road and expansion of rail network according um, across the country. Now, do you see this working if there is this participation of um, labor into, labor into, into the refinery? Government. Because, no, you know, as much as they've requested for a return to status quo, they also demanded, we could still remember their meeting they had with the federal government on account when the federal government last year, early last year, indicated an interest to end the subsidy by June this year. One of their requests was the rehabilitation and refurbishment of our refineries. So let's look at this. This is an agreement they've now finally reached that on account of the rehabilitation, that they will also participate in the rehabilitation to see whether it will go through. Judging that the federal government has already spent $9.5 billion over the period of six years in rehabilitating a refinery that has not been able to produce even one liter of petrol. So don't you feel them coming on board and participating in that process of rehabilitation of the refineries will do magic? Mike, I think we should explain to the poor Nigerians the meaning of subsidy and the meaning of removal. Subsidy, my people, mean that you are a farmer mm. producing yam mm. for your children, but the, pan, the, 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 the pesto and the motor used to pan the yam has gotten square, which is refinery. Mm. You now send the yam to Yoruba man to help you pan it. After pan it, we sell it back to you to eat with your okra. And now you now say, look, the way you both gave him the yam maybe for five naira. And he's returning now, he said he's going to sell it for 20,000 naira. And you know your children cannot afford it. You say, okay, give them for 6,000, I will pay you the balance. That's the subsidy, you are subsidizing the price. That's what government does. Government says, our crude oil, our refinery is too bad to refine it. Then send them to South Africa. Yeah. Send them to South Africa to refine it for us. Crude oil will give them for 5 naira a liter. Now they are returning to sell for us in our filling station. Our brothers go to buy it. And they say, if dollar don't increase, though, we are going to sell it for 200 naira a, do, a, a liter. And the federal government says, hey, our children cannot afford it. They will not go to school. We will pay you the balance. Give them for 150. The, the other one, top is what we call subsidy. If that is the case. What is wrong with us? I cannot build the refinery. And, refinery and, and, and that good, I just built one. What is wrong with us? What are we negotiating? Are we negotiating? If the old refinery are not working, can't put build new one. And yet, many Nigerian politicians have a refinery in, in Ghana here. They have in South Africa. They should be in jail. Are you talking about negotiation? This country will burn if you want to burn. No, no, sir. That's we, the truth. We, we're not in sight. We're not no, to I know that enough. And what what are not, you talking about? We don't want you to be incitive with your statement. We really want to. I don't want to apologize to anybody. Yeah, I, we don't. We don't. We don't want any issue of breakdown of law and order. But can't we really. That is even it? why we are in property today. Remember South Africa? No. The South Africa refused to rest until they have peace. No. Uh, Remember uh, India? Barista, eh? Barista Omar, but do you feel that, because le, le, let me bring you into the question of even asking you about the issue of subsidy. Subsidy for many has been opaque in many grounds. Opaque in the sense that we do not even know who the monies are being paid to. And they said it's marketers. Well, and they said it's marketers. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it has, we've also been opaque with how many liters we consume. Before the NMPC became so yes. importer of petrol, we were consuming nothing less than 30 million liters per day. Yes. But, well, a year after, we're now consuming up to 60 and up to 90 million liters of petrol. So they say. So, can this really stay? Because look at it. We spent 12 trillion naira on subsidy in the last eight years. That one trillion would have built one ref more than two refineries. Okay. Apart from the refinery now, which yes. is now evident that the federal government had made blunder, like you've said, yes. in not building a refinery. But should subsidies still remain on account of all I have said? 
being too opaque, we do not know where it's going to, being so much consuming. We've now run into trillions of Naira in debt on account of paying a subsidy that is just for subsetting few. Mank, I think we should Is let there the any public, other way out of I this? I will tell you now. Please, Let's see it. let the public know the meaning of what we are saying. Mm -hmm. Do you know the oil wells which have scattered over Niger Delta? There's what we call it operation money license granted to Nigerians mm -hmm. who are now the owner of this place because they have given license. Yeah. They bring the crude oil and sell to their brothers who go to Ghana there and refine it and bring it for us to pay them subsidy. Okay. Uh -huh. Who owns the oil? The Niger Deltas, no. But the land use are took from us. Yeah, it's a Nigerian thing. And yeah. now they sell, they sell the crude oil. And then the crude oil is really fine for us because we're handicapped. Yeah. And then it's given back to us to use. The, 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 the whole oil we are consuming, we are never consuming up to 10% of what we owe in our oil. Okay. We do not know. Okay. And yet the 90% is still we are what we are selling every day. The problem is management. Sincerity of heart. This is the concern of government. The people, the problem we have today is over monetization of the government sector. If you know that you are going to be a member of the House of Rep, if you know that you really want to go and make law, be given just 50,000 city allowance, you will not keep to become a legislator. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a governor, you get there, you stay in your house, ride your car. If you don't have a car, you don't even qualify to be a governor in the first place. Then, when you get there, please sit there and execute the law being made by the House of Assembly. And then your salary will be one hundred and fifty thousand a month. Mm -hmm. People will not decrease the rest will be there. You see, Yahawa Nehru, I keep saying Nehru. Nehru told the Indians, you will go naked until you can manufacture your own clothes. He banned all the English clothes that were coming to, to, to India. And that was the beginning of Indian calico. The Indian cotton we are wearing today. Mm -hmm. So also if we must so if we must succeed in this country, yeah. we must learn to take certain decisions that right now. Well, till we can get our own oil, let no more to move. We must be able to refine our own oil. Let me tell you, my brother, there's no, 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 no it's not worth to keep them and train them as soon as they have native technology to even refine the crude oil. Then why are we going to South Africa to buy and, and begin to, to pay subsidy? As, as the other time was president, your brothers are find a way out of hazard, they're able to learn a way of recruiting, of, 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 of re refining their oil that can now operate our generators, put our car, and you're arresting them. There's something wrong somewhere. You want to place your brothers, it's not. What we should have done is get out, and you know, this is why we fought the very wrong civil war. During the Civil War, the Igbos were the first to manufacture a mobile refinery in the whole world. A mobile refinery that was moving on this wheel and was refining. So where are they now? We always kill our best. We kill our own. We say the beautiful ones are not yet born. They are born, but there's no place here. What what will happen, happen now is that if we allow the Niger Delta to recruit their own, to refine their own, in their own crude way and we are buying it, it's better than we are going to buy from Ghana, South Africa, our pay subsidy. Let us at least be able to refine our own oil. And then we talk, we talk about If we have fine oil, we can buy 550 naira a liter here. Because it's refined here, it's produced here, it's sold here, it's consumed here. The rest will now export because we have the best oil, the burning light. Then when we now have export, do you know that in Dubai, no, no, no city of that country works? They are being paid salary from the essence of the crude oil. But here we are looking for a job, we have no job. That's a problem here. That's a problem. The government must be disciplined. They must sit up and stop selling our money. Okay. Well, anyway, but like, as much as you've said this, and you feel that would have been a better way rather yeah. than putting a plug on the subsidy yeah. issue, but I, I, I want us to still also remain with some of the agreement that was reached yesterday. Which agreement? Account. Who sent them? <laughs> well, well, I wonder. But that's the agreement and the reason for the purported suspension of the strike action. Please, uh, by Samuel Rabo, please, by Samuel Rabo, I ask the questions, yeah. and I really want you to address some of okay. the issues. Because as much as you're not happy with the negotiation being reached by Labour and the federal government on account of what you're saying, but le let's look at another agreement, and it's the issue of increasing and developing our educational sector. Now, we're not talking about a lengthy agreement between government, and not just only facing that of uh, the Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress. But this is also something that will benefit the, the larger population. Because if you also remember, 
that ASU went on strike for 19 months under president, former President uh, Buhari's administration. Mm -hmm. 19 months. And on account of the discussion they had yesterday, there was this agreement reached that they have to implement a way of improving the educational sector, knowing that we spent about $4 billion alone in the last eight years on foreign educational tourism. I'd rather call it like that. Now, don't you feel that such agreements and orders, like I've said initially, is also a better way of keeping that same government you are angry about accountable? Because it looks as if we let them rule it without having intense participation in all of this. Is it not time and timely looking at this agreement that Nigerians should come on board in also looking at how government handles and ensure some of these things work? Is this not time? Thank you, Mike. You see, maybe I'm too blunt and it does not satisfy most people, but I must speak my mind. Yes. What, first of all, brought down the educational system? <laughs> Because when you want to solve a problem, look to the root and not at the apex. Yeah. Now, we once had good education system in this country even before the, uh, the advent of independence. Yeah. And now we had one of the best leaders who introduced free and fair and working education to the Western region, yeah. which were our beneficiaries. And now we're talking of improving the education sector. Do you know that in the whole of Nigeria, mm. primary school failed, secondary school failing, yeah. university failing, we now patronize the private sector of education, mm. which is now the best. Both at the primary, no, secondary, finished. and tertiary yes. level. Yeah, you can now see that all are being monetized. Yeah. So instead of going to uh, Igbudu Primary School, you rather go to maybe St. Susan Comprehensive College. Yeah. And why? Because our teachers, yeah. whom we put there, who are actually well trained, yeah. uh, uh, they are training. All of education and then go to uh, uh, university yeah. to get a degree in education. When they teach there for two days, they have rented one Ranshako building behind their house. It's now the Okoke and Okoke and Co. They spend, spend just two hours there where they still sell broom, sell barrel, sell cake, <laughs> sell uh, uh, mineral, all to meet up. Then and they go there to their private school and sit down and make a good school and teach well and enroll them in private centers and make sure they make a school set. Our government turned their eye. The CIE who approved the school for them is mm. also a teacher. Mm. Then if we want to talk about doing things, yeah. I keep saying we need to amend our heads, not our laws. And what let me tell you in the general congress negotiate about education. You don't give what you don't have. They should first want to negotiate about to organize the general book congress. If you want to negotiate the question, we have different governments now, different NGOs now. It's us, not NLC. Us should be the one to be for for NUT. The general you know, Congress. Nigerian and Nigerian you know, teachers. The yeah. general you know, teachers and, and us should sit down, set up a committee with the government, and they will spray the entire overhaul of Nigerian education. But, but, but don't you see these as a step in the right direction? Mm -hmm. And no. the beginning of no. such No, look, look, let me tell you, when people want to beat your mother, they give you good excuse why they slap her. And you say, Mama, you do like that. We sent you to go and tell them to bring the fuel down. You now tell them what the dedication where the crisp. You tell them to go to that No insult, so, please. <laughs> my no. I'll so, beg you to contain your emotions. No, 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 and no, please no, no, no. Let, let, let's sound air word. Yeah, look, 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 my brother. You see, yeah. I've been on air for almost thirty years now. Yes, that I know the, the the ethics. I cannot yeah. come here to behave as like I do. Okay. But at times you you drag it. I'm saying it to the common man to here, not for the professor who's sitting drinking tea this morning. The common man that is pushing with Bairo, you know, uh, will talk to the market, this woman I'm talking to. Not for those who have eaten the rat food and that eat the set on it. Yes, my generation can pass away. Remember how Martin Luther once said, as for you, my classmate, my friend, I fear none, because the same room will sweep us away. As for the younger ones, they stand among you, the future president of the federal of, 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 of the United States. So when I talk, I'm talking to the poor generation. But, but should, should, should so, negotiations not be the way to go? What rather is than the we negotiation? Have a, rather than we have a total collapse of the system. On Let me tell you, when I, was, when I was student in your president, eh, I keep telling our vice chancellor, must we wait till we strike before we can talk? If you have in, in, involved us in your policy making, mm. look, uh, SUG, Combo, it's also so we are going to do, so, so yeah. we are going to do. Yeah. We will look into it and say, no, people will react to, yeah. they will see us betray us. So yeah. Why can't they do it like this? Government never involved in this country. 
until it becomes a striking moment. I remember uh, uh, Governor Ezefe visited us, but that was not a governor. Ezefe told us that if you have a government, you go to him and plead with him, mm. he does not listen to you. You talk to him, you break yourself, he does not see you. Maybe when you kick him, he will feel you. That's where we are. We always kick before they call us. So before this subsidy something, Bonatino Tinubu should have arrested for at least one week and set a committee to look into what the subsidy, Proper. whether it was real or it was imaginary, or people were stealing, or what was going on. Then he will be planning. And then we announce what he has found but, out. But don't you feel he has all of this information? Hence his need information of information really outside government, different information when you are in charge. And the, and we activists. When we are acting outside, mm -hmm. by the time we get in there, it's not what we think that's really happening, that's actually happening. So that's why we see when Okishimode was president of the Jalil Bok Congress, because mm -hmm. Okishimode was governor. And you know, we're very active, one of the best presidents we've ever had. So you know don't you feel you are, not, you are not also seeing the bigger and yeah, larger No, because bigger. I have been on both sides. Because no, I have been on both sides. So you, that's you're not issue. in government. So I have been on both sides, I know what I mean. So when you, for example, let me just tell you, mm -hmm. if strike was to go on by or tomorrow, yeah. People will invite me. Say, go and talk to them. I'll say, why? Then I'll be able to argue with them. That is why you right. never see me compromise. Uh, some of my mates, I'll go there and they'll come and be the one begging me at home. Leave them now. Leave them now. What is the worry now? But, but would a strike action at this time, yes. looking at the economy, not be more deep? That is what they used to. The, let me tell you what they used to deceive to, us. to the economy rather uh, than being yes. more fit. That one of my late friends once said this on ITV. He said Nigeria is like one big cow. Then the rich and the, the person with gun, this arm, will cold, hold the breast and be making it in the pocket, in the bucket. Then when the poor man says, ah, why are you doing that? They say, we need peace. Please, Nigeria, I need peace. Go, 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 go away, we need peace. I don't want to. And yes, they are making the whole thing. Now, that's the truth. That's happening. So when they tell you, we need peace, if we go on strike, make things suffer, couldn't you have known before we, you will need to do what we need to strike? Like I told you just now, if the government have involved us mm -hmm. and said, look, well, so you can heard this thing. First of all, I heard this thing. Please go and find out and report to us why this subsidy, who is involved in subsidy, and why are the family not working? Let us find out why we cannot refine oil. If you have not a poor, you don't mind the bush, can refine his own. Please, let the report for within one month. We will know he has us at heart. Don't just come out to remove from our mouth that we are talking. But if that's your own view and what you believe will really work it out, I need to thank you so much, Vice Kesi Omoyerabo, uh, for coming and also talking about this, uh, judging by uh, what uh, the Labour said yesterday. And they have not really gone on a strike, but also would rather negotiate more. Or they will reconvene on the 19th of uh, this month with further discussion, or even to see on if they will finally own. take that stand of them backing on a strike. But for me, God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.